Hello guys and welcome to my channel. So this new tower came out recently in patch 1.3 and there have been some complaints because it's too much of a DPS check compared to like previous towers and I agree it's kind of true but in the other hand you only need these first 9 stars to claim the rewards that matter which are the asteroids and that's way easier than getting a full clear. Then the rest is just some additional shield credits that you can skip for now. Also it's a permanent mode, so don't worry if you cannot do it now cause it doesn't reset, you won't really be missing anything. But in case you wanna do this now, in this video I will show you it's possible even with bullshit teams using only permanent 5 stars with no sequences, 4 stars with very low sequences, and Xianli Yao which is limited I guess but was given for free to everyone. For that left tower I will use S0 Anchor, S1 Sanhua and S0 Beishi. Middle tower I will do with S2 Dunshin, S3 Havoc Rover and S0 Barina. And right tower with Xianli Yao, Barina and Beishi, all of them at S0. I'm also not gonna use any limited 5 star weapons, but I do have a few ones from the permanent banner. So let's go see the clears and I will try to give you some tips to make it easier and show you the builds as we watch. The first floor was the hardest for me. I was stuck at 17 stamps for some days just because of this floor. I had to try and kill this fusion prism with Sanhua because she's the only one that can do damage to it. But she has cooldown so while she's reloading I go kill the other one with Hancor. Here you can take advantage of the bears attacking you and the fireball from the other prison to dodge and go to the last hit of your basic attack which deals more damage. I can use Sanjo again now so I go back to the other prison and basically repeat this until they both die. The Havoc one is gonna die first of course because Anchor hits harder. Now I have to hurry up and kill the fusion one because when timer is under 8 minutes one of the birds will eat it to recover full HP and I don't want that to happen. Once the fusion prism dies, the rest of the fight is pretty straightforward. Buff normal attacks with Sanhua, then basic attack with Anchor. Try to get as many of those counters as possible. So let's see the build as the fight goes on. This is A0 Anchor, S1 Sanhua, S0 Baishi. Sanhua and Anchor have permanent 5 star weapon R1. Baishi has 3525 from the force, cause I don't have variations sadly. And I will be honest with you guys, I don't even know how to play Baishi and what she does, I'm too lazy to read her kit. I'm basically using her as her healing set and bell echo bot for the fight. Yeah. 
This green bear here scared me because I'm so so ready to dodge counter the plunge attack it's gonna do but then the hitbox got like bugged in the air and it never hit so my mind blocked and I didn't know what to do the other bell hit me yeah that hitbox bug almost killed the entire run but luckily I was able to recover So that's it, the end of what was, at least for me, the hardest floor in this tower. Now we go to floor 2, Crownless. We wait for him here. Careful with this initial attack, you have to dodge it twice. If you are playing Anchor here, I recommend you try to do Inferno Rider parries, like that. Remember you need to finish the animation to get the fusion boost. If you use your Inferno Rider randomly, Crownless will hit you and you have to either dodge or take damage. If you parry him with it, he will stay still for a few seconds and you have time to finish the animation. Something went wrong with my game sound here, I'm sorry guys. It will be back in seconds. There it is. Be careful when he is waking up from the stagger, he will do two hits. That's another Inferno Rider parry there. And now this is the chain attack. After this one hit, you dodge it, and if you are playing Anchor, you get a nice safe damage window to do her skill with the final hit included while he's in the air. And then from here, the fight just repeats. Should be pretty easy once you know the boss. My Sanfa is still using Glacier set here, it's actually better to use Moonlit set to buff Anchor even more, but I like having my Sanfa do some damage too, and there is time to spare here so it doesn't really matter.
So floor 2 is done with 30 seconds to spare and not a much taken which is always a nice bonus. Ok, middle tower, floor 1. For the right crusher you wanna break his shield as fast as possible. If you don't, he will start doing more annoying attacks where he goes running around the arena. It's not that much about damage, more about using your intro and auto skills to break it faster. And then for the boss, you also want to get the stagger fast before he goes into second phase, because then he will go flying a lot and it's harder to hit him. So basically, keep spamming your intro and auto skills. Be careful with this leg attack he's about to do, this one, because it doesn't look like a hit and it doesn't do a lot of damage either, but if you're using dancing, it's enough to kill you. When you see these knockback animations, it's about to start phase 2, so hurry up with your intro and auto skills to get the stagger. For phase 2 he will start flying and doing more annoying attacks, just hit him whenever you can and keep using your intro and outro when they are available to get the second stagger. The stagger is really long for this boss and you wanna take advantage of it. Let's see the build for these two characters, my dungeon is S2 with permanent banner 5 star sword, the same one I was using for Sanja before, remember you can swap them as long as they are in different teams. And then my rover is S3, like everyone else, we cannot get more than that for now. And this is Hugh, actually, he's using Command of Conviction, Level 70. If you got Changli weapon, for example, you can give it to Danshin and put the permanent 5 star on Rover, the team will do a lot more damage. But I don't have it and I don't wanna spend resources on leveling this one more, cause I will get Camellia Sword soon and never use this again basically, so I use it like this for now. This ending is unfortunate, he started doing this annoying hammer attack when he was almost dead. The clear could go down way faster with a little more damage, but still 10 seconds to spare. Floor 2 now, this first wave is really crazy, I start hearing the ice cubes here. They will explode and kill themselves later, but you have to do at least some damage for them to do that. 
and I want them gone as fast as possible. And now it's only the walls. These walls won't let you catch a break, they hit all the time and you have to dodge a lot. But this is a really good run on the world. I kill them with 8.50 minutes remaining, when I usually kill them with like 8.30. This beam, you have to dodge it twice, like dodge, counter, then dodge, counter again, otherwise it will still hit you. They group together here, that's like really good RNG, it doesn't happen a lot. Then comes Mephis, don't try to knock him here when he spawns, he's immune for some seconds and you will waste all your damage, you can see I'm saving my dancing charge attack, and now I can use it. For this floor, once the walls are gone, this Mephis is pretty easy, if you have done Mephis hologram before, this one is missing like half of the moves, he still has a lot of HP though, so try to do parries and then throw out just to stagger him and do more damage. Here is Farina build, she's a zero, and it's basically the same build as Faisi. Sadly I don't have variation, the 4 star weapon from Gacha that generates concerto energy. So this will be fire 25 is what I cop with for now, for energy recharge. So this is it, floor 2, beaten with 20 seconds to spare. We go to right tower now, floor 1 of this tower is the biggest DPS check, that's why I'm using Barina here and just leave Baishi for floor 2. If you have a nook, like Xian Li Yao Liberation, you wanna make sure it hits all enemies. Like if you have to go out of your way, take some more seconds running around them, do it. You will lose way more time if you miss an enemy. And always go for the mobs first, especially for the birds, waves 1 and 3. For the lizards I don't think it matters that much.
Here is my Xian Liao build, he's a zero and using the 5 star weapon from permanent banner R1. Finally, Ryder is here. For this fight, you will see me tank a lot of hit, because I need to hurry and continue my rotation, otherwise I lose too much time dodging. Luckily, he doesn't do a lot of damage, so that can be done. My recommendation is try to take the hits when you're using skills that prevent you from being thrown into the air, like when you use Mephis or the first hit from Xian Liao skill, for example. You take damage, sure, but it doesn't push you and interrupt your rotation. I get the stagger here and this is pretty much done. No crit on the last liberation sadly, but still floor 1 done with 15 seconds to spare. Floor 2 is actually easier than the first one, at least when it comes to DPS check. So I'm just using Baishi here again as a healing set and the Leco bot. This high end speed pretty hard, so make sure to dodge them, or just take distance, honestly. If you clear floor 1 with 3 stamps, you should have spare time for this one. Be careful with this one attack with the multiple bombs, it's really hard. I was lucky there because my Xiang Liao did that attack pattern where he repositions to the back of the enemy, but if you are in front you need to dodge that or it might one shot you. 
It's multi hit too, so it will even pop your bell instantly. This hitbox is huge. I saw that guy jumping and I was like, no way he hits me, he's so far away. And then boom, I got hit. That's unfortunate, but the rest of the run was pretty good otherwise. And finally, here is Scar, the last boss for this tower. I'm not sure why he gets frozen like this. This is not the only a slowdown thing, it's something else. First time I thought my game was bugging or lagging, but then I saw this in other people's players too. But yeah, this car is pretty easy. He doesn't have that much HP and gets staggered really quick. I use my Vice Intro here to skip that annoying ground slam. Look at this poor scar man. One intro hit taking like 25% of his stagger bar. They nerfed him way too much compared to the first car we had in tower. Finally, floor to dawn with 30 seconds to spare. And that's it! Over the horizon, completed with 7 characters, no limited weapons, and pretty much no limited characters except Xian Lia, which is free anyway. Just in case you are wondering why I play like this, why I do this to myself. First, because I really enjoy the challenge, and second, because I'm saving all my currency for Camellia since day one, to hopefully get a 6 Camellia. It's pretty much guaranteed at this point. I have all this, and then you have to add 60 PD on weapon banner, and maybe PD on character banner. I lost my 50-50 on Shorekeeper, so my next 5 star is Camellia, for sure, for sure. And then I'm pretty sure I have enough to get 4 more copies and buy another 2 with Coral from the shop. So if you enjoyed this video and would like to see some Camellia content when she comes out, you can subscribe to my channel and come back to see that. I will be pulling for her and then doing some comparisons like S0 versus S1, S2, S6, maybe some solo Camellia fights, that kind of stuff. But for today's video, this is it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you soon.